Hello, I'm going to be going over a uh, quick modification I made to my Prusa Mini to allow it to uh, automatically eject parts to do continuous printing. This is because I have a part that needs to be made, these uh, ring displays that require a high amount of detail and to be uh, free of blemishes and they need to be printed out of a filament that has a lot of stringing. In order to achieve that, I'm printing them one at a time and having the printer remove them as opposed to filling a build plate full of them. This allows the really high quality parts to be made without a uh, constant operator intervention. To do this, I mounted a pneumatic cylinder on to the base of the printer uh, and have it, it, ha it is stick as close to the hot end as possible so that it can reach over the entire build plate when it's all the way back. One of the first modifications I made to the G-code to print this file is that instead of a line uh, prime, it uses a blob prime, uh, which it prints in front of the pneumatic cylinder so that when the plate gets cleared, the blob also gets cleared. Um, it's tall enough so that the cylinder can uh, clip it off the build plate. Once this uh, prime is finished, it moves on to printing. Uh, you can kind of see it gets it, it squishes quite close to the bed, which is not really ideal. But uh, this is a, a, a PLA that has wood shards uh, as an additive. So the adhesion is pretty bad. And because I need it to be consistent since I'm leaving this running uh, overnight, I wanted it to make sure that it stuck to the bed. After the print finishes, the print head moves up to trigger that spring at the top of the build area, which connects electricity to the fan that's to the side of the build plate. This is active cooling for the build plate, since passive cooling takes far too long in my hot garage during the Arizona summer. It cools the part down to allow it to break off the build plate a lot easier. Without it, the cylinder had a hard time breaking the part off. It then The print head then moves to another limit switch and this limit switch uh, is connected to the 24 volts of the, the printer supply, which controls a pneumatic solenoid, which ac activates the pneumatics and uh, pushes the part off the plate. It runs three times uh, just to be safe, just to make sure that it clears the part off. The reason these limit switches were used was to avoid having the need for relays or anything else like that, but also allowing the G-code itself to control when the fan and the parts get ejected so that no external control system was needed besides what was you know, already running the print program. There are two parts needed to make this uh, item. The other, the first part is a lot harder to remove. This part's a lot easier. It has a lower surface area and is a lot taller, but the same process happens for both. And they, the printer alternates between printing each one so that the PEI on the bed doesn't get completely worn out. As for the part itself, it's connected using a single uh, M3 wood screw. These are pretty cool because they, uh, unlike machine screws, they thread straight into the plastic, but they still have a socket head, uh, a hex uh, key so that an Allen key can be used. The two parts fit together. There's a little indent, triangular indent in the finger part and a matching key in the base. This allows them to fit together. The parts are printed in two pieces. So the, the finger part of the can have the layer lines going in the direction where the ring will be uh, inserted onto the part. So they can just be screwed together uh, pretty easily. And it makes this ring display.